In this video we can talk about a simple way to remove sky gradients in your astro images. We'll talk about what pixels are, what median filters are, we'll dissect an image to understand the noise components inside the image, we will look at a gradient removal process and then we'll demo that process using Photoshop and then finally we'll demo a gradient removal removal action in Photoshop and show you how you can download and install it. You can think of pixels as a matrix of numbers with each number representing how bright that pixel should be. Black and white images only have one number but colour images have three to represent the red, green and blue components. A median filter is a type of average if we take a list of numbers and sort them into order, then the median will be the middle value in that list. So in this example, it's the value 6. When we apply median filters to images, we replace the value of the pixel with the median value of the pixels around it. And we use a radius value to define how many pixels or how large an area around the pixel we want to change that we will use. The larger the radius, the more pixels that are used to make the calculation and the longer the calculation will take. One useful feature of a median filter is it tends to remove features that are smaller than the radius specified. Now let's look at an example. We want to take an image of these two stars, but the image will contain noise. The random shot noise can be dealt with through stacking or taking longer exposures. However, stacking and calibration won't remove a sky gradient. So the image we actually take is probably more like this. If we take our image and pass it through a median filter, in this case with a radius of 3.5, we get a good approximation to the actual sky gradient in the image. We want to set our radius so that all the details in the image are removed and only the sky gradient remains. If we then subtract our filtered image from the original image then the result will be the image without the sky gradient. And whilst not perfect it's significantly better than the image we took. OK, so let's look at how we would apply this in our imaging software. The first thing to do is to duplicate our image as a new layer. The default layer mode is normal and as a result we won't actually see any change at this point. We then apply a median filter to the new layer to smooth the image. Then we change the layer mode to subtract. This removes the sky gradient. Here's an example of some results. I took this image in 2009 and I've only got the JPEG version of the image so we don't actually have much to work with. But it's a good image to use because of the obvious sky gradients. Now I'll open up Photoshop and show you how to do this manually. I've already opened the image and the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate the layer. I've given the layer a descriptive name. And now I'm going to apply a median filter. I now experiment with the radius to remove the details that I want to keep. I could just subtract this layer from the layer below 
and get reasonable results but I have found that this sometimes leaves everything a little bit too dark. To correct that using a third layer. This layer I'm just going to fill with the average value of all the pixels in the image. And I'm going to take this away from the images below and reduce the effect using the opacity slider to 50%. I'm now going to make the two layers I've just created into a smart object. This smart object is the blurred image minus half the average intensity of the whole image. I'm now going to change the layer mode of this smart object to subtract. And you can see the sky gradients have completely disappeared. Now I think this looks a bit too flat for most people. So I can now adjust the opacity to alter the level of the effect that I want. And I think 80% looks about right. Let's delete that adjustment layer and show how this works with my actions. Select Actions and then select Gradient Removal 2. It's worth reading the messages. I know most people don't read instructions, but they really do contain some useful information. The dialog box will guide you through the next step. Adjust the radius as needed for your image, and the adjustment layer is created. The only thing left to do now is to adjust the opacity to get the image looking the way you want it to look. You can download the action from the link in the description. Then from inside Photoshop, select the Load Actions option from the Actions menu and you'll be able to install it. Feel free to leave comments, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.